Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. You're probably wondering where I've been for the past couple of weeks. Well, let me explain. YouTube put me on strike, as you can see. I wasn't allowed to upload any videos or do anything for at least a couple of weeks. Um, they banned me for two weeks, and um, if I get one more strike, uh, I could lose the channel. So I'm looking to move to a new channel very soon. Uh, I'm just going to upload a few videos that I've been um, queuing up, and over the next few weeks, uh, Keep an, keep an eye out on my channel and I'll show you like which channel to move to. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's carry on with the first topic today. And we have a lot of stuff to catch up on. Obviously a lot of stuff has happened and I've not been able to post any videos or anything. I did however manage to get on to Duran's channel. So if you catch to Duran... Uh, make sure you watch me. I'm, I did manage to get in like last week, so I did an interview there. So if you do get a chance, have a look. Anyway, let's move on. I'm going to talk about Great Britain today. Well, not so Great Britain anymore. And, uh, and we're going to talk about the plight of Great Britain. What the hell is happening around here? And I'm going to try and explain as much as I can. So without further ado, let's carry on with the show. So the Bank of England has been getting a lot of heat at the moment because the interest rates are just going up and up and up. People are losing homes. People are losing their finances because a lot of people who are working from paycheck to paycheck, they are getting loans and these interest rates means they have to pay back a higher amount, a higher amount of interest in their loans. And a lot of people are defaulting and a lot of people are, are becoming homeless because they're also losing their homes. They can't keep up with the mortgage payments and things like that. So things are not looking good. Uh, Bank of England has said recently that they're going to carry on increasing interest rates until 2026 or as long as inflation is uh, under control, which is never going to happen, by the way, because they don't even understand what the meaning of inflation is. So uh, we are all doomed. Let's just put it that way, shall we? So Rishi Sunak is also under a lot of heat as well. Um, he's not been very popular at the moment, and he's getting a lot of heat from his own backbenchers, and a lot of Tories are want him out. Because he made five promises um, this year when he came to power. And he's failed in every single one of his promises that he made. And he's failed pretty miserably. And I'm going to go through each of his, these promises that he's made. And not only that, he was prancing around in the G7. He was um, calling China a threat. While... Well, at home, he's got an economy that's falling apart and he's worried about China. I mean, come on. Seriously, what what the guy, what is this guy drinking? Seriously. So I'm going to go through all these pledges that he's made and I'm going to kind of explain whether it's actually working or it's not working. So let's start with inflation. So inflation has already failed, as you can see from this article, inflation to top Bank of England target at, le at least 2026. And inflation is going through the roof. I mean, I, I've gone to the supermarkets and, and prices are still going up. They are talking about putting price limits on uh, important food items. But I don't know how that's going to work. And... Um, you know, inflation has just gone through the roof. I mean, people are saying the inflation has gone up to official figures are 20 percent, but unofficial figures we're talking about 40 to 50 percent. And I've been talking about this in my channel throughout the year, uh, all of these price rises. And I think people in England have just given up. They are nobody's protesting out there, they've all given up, they all um, don't mind paying extra every single week when they go to the supermarket. And I just feel that everyone's just given up and just lost all of their will to fight and just don't know what to do. Yeah, I think British people have pretty much given up. So in terms of inflation, uh, you can pretty much say that British has failed in that one. The growing the economy, I mean, don't make me laugh. 
<laughs> this is a funny one. And you can see IMF has said that UK economy will grow faster than Germany this year. Can you see the positive headlines they are putting? However, when you actually look at the facts and figures, it is not very positive because even though they're trying to polish a turd, it's still a turd at the end of the day. You know, Germany literally has suicide, you know, basically they've done an economic suicide on themselves. Um, they have um, literally no gas. Uh, they're buying, ex you know, they've cut off Russian gas and they're buying ex expensive LNG. Uh, they've shut down all of their nuclear facilities and they have opened up their coal mines. So no wonder Germany is suffering. They have re literally done this to themselves. They are deindustrializing. They are also um, putting all of these ridic ridiculous um, anti-Chinese um, sanctions against China as well. They are, I think they, they're coming up with this new China policy, which will be coming out soon. And recently in the G7, they were clamming around like the gang of G7 like a gang of kids, and they're all blaming China. Schultz was there as well. He was pointing at China, talking about economic coercion and stuff like that. So Germany is pretty much done for, and England is not very far behind, guys. I mean, we are not as reliant on Russian gas as the Germans were, uh, but still, we are still uh, in a really, really bad state. And just because the IMF says the UK economy will grow faster than Germany is not really a good thing. Germany's economy is pretty much uh, going to hell. And we're not far behind, to be honest. And you can see how bad it is. UK economy grew by 0.1% in the first quarter of 2023 amid high inflation and interest rates. So let me tell you something. This is in the first quarter. So what's the difference between the first quarter uh, and this coming quarter? Well, t let me tell you that the inflation's gone higher, the interest rates have gone higher, which means government borrowing, mean, government borrowing um, costs are going to go higher, and they're going to have to pay more back, which means they're going to make less money because more, more is going to be paid using um, interest rates uh, because interest rates have gone up. And also... Um, the price of um, oil and stuff like that is, is also going up as well. Crude oil is going up and the price of the dollar is going up as well. So when they want to buy, when they want to import goods using the dollar, um, that's going to be um, more expensive. In every way, single, single way, Britain is pretty much screwed. Um, there's no way of talking um, around it. And even though the economy grew by 0.1%, which is nothing really, to be honest, um, I don't think it's going to grow much this quarter because of the growing dollar index. You know, the, the pound is getting weaker, the dollar is getting stronger, and cost of commodities are getting more expensive, price of oil is getting more expensive, uh, price of transports is going get, to get more expensive, inflation is still going up. So I don't think they're going to make much um, uh, money uh, this this quarter as well. And don't forget, every single month, Britain is losing more and more business because more and more businesses are moving out of UK. And recently, uh, Arm, which is British uh, semiconductor company, they decided to do an IPO in the American stock exchange, in the New York stock exchange rather than the UK stock exchange. Uh, BT has said that they're going to cut 55,000 jobs. Vodafone is going to cut 11,000 jobs. So there's job cuts happening everywhere. Businesses are moving to Europe. Uh, businesses are shutting up shop. Nobody's coming to invest in UK because they know what a bloody crap hole this is. Um, so nobody's coming to invest here. So I think that economy, that 0.1% is probably going to be much less this um, this quarter, but we'll see. And the next one, uh, which I'm going to go back to, the next one, uh, fall in debt. So how can Rishi reduce the debt, right, when the government had to borrow more money every single month because of inflation 
and you can see here government have to borrow 25 billion in April God knows how much they're gonna to have to borrow in May so his um, promise about reducing debt is pretty much um, blown out of the water right because you can't reduce debt when you have to keep on borrowing money and 25 billion um, they've borrowed in April is actually the highest they've ever borrowed and um, you can see here is the highest they've ever borrowed and it's going to be higher in May as well and look at this guy he, he looks like he's really happy with himself for borrowing all that money but yeah inflation interest rate rights in interest rate rises is causing havoc in the UK economy and it's just forcing the government to borrow more money because they just don't have the money the next thing he promised is cutting waiting lists so I don't know if you know much about UK, but there's nurses which are going on strike, doctors are going on strike, and this still has not been resolved yet. And um, so how can you pop the waiting list when you have nurses going on strike, you have doctors going on strike? So, you know, this is completely again blown out of the water. There are strikes happening all over the UK and there's no end in sight. So again, you know, in order to cut the waiting list, you need a lot of staff, right? You need a lot of staff. You need you need to basically churn out these waiting lists and you need a lot of people, you need a lot of doctors, you need a lot of nurses, and they all need to be working extra hard. But no one's going to be working extra hard when, not, when they're not getting paid. The nurse is feeling undervalued. The doctors are feeling undervalued. They're not going to put the time in. They're not, they're not going to put any overtime in. And people working in that industry is getting less and less and less again um, you know I've got to say Brexit is an issue as well before we, when we had Brexit we used to get lots of staff uh, coming from European countries but now we have to get them from India and Africa and stuff like that and they have to go through a lot of training before they can kind of work in UK hospitals and things like that. there's a lot of um, issues uh, which comes comes with Brexit and this is one of them and I just do not see them cutting waiting lists in, in fact the waiting lists have gone higher and higher and the last thing he mentioned was stopping small boats stopping immigration basically he's, he's trying to uh, he's trying to say and again immigration is actually the highest in UK ever even before Brexit so uh, Again, he's failed on that one as well. He's failed in every single thing. Um, the year is not even out yet. This has only been six months since he made these promises. And another six months will probably be much, much worse off. So let's just end it there and just say that, you know what, he's failed. And it's just going to get worse. I don't see any end in sight, to be honest. So... Um, He's recently gone to the G7, he's prancing around with his mates, having a good time when the UK economy is actually, you know, going on a downward trajectory. He's out there with his G7 mates, putting China and Russia the number one enemies and spent, you know, a little holiday there um, with his um, nice location in Hiroshima, nice vacation with his wife. And uh, he comes out and starts blaming China. So this is the time when Britain must, needs to start building relationships with the rest of the world, starts trading with countries such as China. But no, he decides to come out and start being um, an a-hole um, to China uh, with his absolute ridiculous rhetoric. He didn't, he didn't even have to say anything like that. You, you can imagine... Biden, you know, not even Biden said anything remotely close as that, you know, bad as that. So he's like, his, you know, Biden's little puppet. It used to be Boris, so now it's Rishi Sunak. This guy's got no spine whatsoever. And um, again, he's not thinking about the UK economy. He's not thinking about himself. Um, he's not suffering the, like the rest of British people are. You know, he's a millionaire or billionaire. His wife's a billionaire. You know, they can live life... You know, they can have a great life while everyone else is suffering. Um, so he doesn't really care about whether, you know, Britain goes down the pan or not. He'll still have a good life, right? So again, this guy is totally out of touch. Totally. 
And then you have Liz Truss going to China. And again, you know, this is a disgraced ex-prime minister. She is so bad, guys. She is so bad that there was a time when she went to a hotel out of taxpayers' money and she stole towels, she stole bathrobes, she stole lips, uh, slippers. And basically the hotel uh, gave an £11,000 bill to, to the, um, the government saying, you know, these items were missing um, and Liz Truss basically stole them. And it's so embarrassing for a prime minister to do something like that. You can, you can understand when, if you're like, you know, if you're like poor or something like that, or, you know, you come from a really deprived, you know, household and you, you live in a, you go to and stay in a nice hotel and you decide to take the towels and the bathrobes as, a, you know, as a gift and, you know, without paying. So, you, you know, you, if you're low class and you can do that and get away with it, then that's fine. But this is the prime minister you're talking about, or ex-prime minister. And doing something like that must be utterly embarrassing. And getting caught as well it must be so embarrassing. And this woman, you know, every time she opens her mouth, you just your brain just stops working because you just nothing she says matters. Nothing she says, you know, you, you, you just don't want to listen to anything she says. And what's worse, she took a plane to, I think it was Australia or something, to do a trade deal with Australia at the time. And she booked first class. And she booked first class and the first class seats cost £500,000. So half a million pounds it cost her. And her excuse was, we needed the, to be in first class because we were talking about sensitive subjects and things like that. We, we didn't want anyone else to hear us and that was her excuse basically so she booked a first class flight half a million pounds out of taxpayers money then booked obviously a nice hotel and stuff like that so this is this is the you know this is the prime minister at the time or or she was the kind of um, foreign minister at the time I can't, I can't remember but all of these stories are just coming out now and it's really really irresponsible of her it's really irresponsible of the government um, to do something like that. And now she's gone all the way to Taiwan to cause more trouble, you know. the end of the day, she's still a member of parliament, right? She's not an ex-member of parliament, like, um, you know, and she's she is somebody, you know, she was an ex-prime minister, so, 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 so she's kind of important or was important at, at, at the time. And obviously she's still a member of parliament, Government could have stopped her from going easily. They could have said, you know what, let's, let's you know, we, we don't approve of this trip. Or they could have come out on the press said, you know, we don't approve Liz Truss going there. You know, she, what she's doing is going out of her own accord. The British taxpayer is not paying for this. She's paying it for herself or, Thai, or you know, the people of Taiwan are paying for it. But the government should have just kind of washed their hands off her and said, you know, we're, we're not part of this, we're, we're not involved. But no, they didn't say anything like that. They didn't, you know, stop her from going. They just let her go. Even the papers were saying, you know, this was a really bad idea. You know, what, who does she think she is? A British Pelosi. And uh, it was a really bad idea. And she's just a washed up ex-prime minister who's out there to get attention. And you know, when people... they. When people in in the parliament want a bit of attention, what do they do? They start throwing rhetoric about China. They start becoming anti-Chinese. And that's how you get attention. You get attention from the media. You get attention from the deep state, from the military industrial complex. People from Washington will notice and they'll start clapping. You know, that's how it works and when, you, when you're in parliament. You, you say something bad about China, you become famous. And this is exactly what she's doing. She's using China to, for her own needs. You know, she's, she's not doing it for the country. She's definitely not doing it for Taiwan. So, you know, some people, intelligent people, can see right through her. Unfortunately, we don't have many intelligent people in UK left. <coughs>
So you can see Sunak, um, this proves that UK is a complete puppet of the United States. And he says, UK aligned with US on China, mulls investment curbs. So UK is aligned with US on China. So basically he's saying we are complete puppets of the United States. We have completely capitulated to the United States. They are the master. Whatever they do, we will do as well. So my, Biden basically said recently that he's going to put some sort of investment curb on, on co companies that invest in China. And guess what? Sunak said he's going to do the same thing. So it's pretty much like a parrot. Whatever the US does, Britain does as well. And I remember during the Olympic Games when Beijing was hosting the Olympic Games, um, you know, United States decided to boycott it and Britain decided to boycott it. So whatever the United States do, Britain is not far behind them, like a little parrot, like a little, you know, chihuahua, as you would say. But it's absolutely embarrassing. You know, there was a time when I remember Britain had its own policy and they were like, and Britain was like, you know, very much keeping United States under control. Here you have United States who, who want to do this, who want to do that, who want to go to war here. Britain has always been some sort of, you know, a guiding light for the United States to stop them from kind of doing um, crazy stuff around the world. Um, it's not like that anymore. Now we we stopped given the United States advice and now we just do what they want to want us to do. It's absolutely embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing, guys. So I want to talk about Cleverly as well. It's just the whole government. So you see, Cleverly is this, this guy. He's obviously not that clever. And um, again, this guy wants to get some trade deals from China and he wants to get some... Um, freebies from China, he wants to get investment from China, but then with one hand he's begging and with the other hand he's slapping China at the same time. So this guy, he, he, you know, he talks about, you know, China's red lines, he talks about Taiwan, talks about Uyghurs, he talks about all these um, human rights abuses that he said he's going to have a chat with China about. And, and then on the other hand he says, oh, we we cannot refuse Chinese investments or we want Chinese investments. We want trade with China. But then you, you slap China with the other hand as well. I mean, has the world forgotten or has British politicians forgotten what diplomacy is like? Is this how you, you know, do world diplomacy with, with a really powerful nation like China? You slap them with one hand and you ask them for freebies from the other hand. I mean, if I was living in my own property and somebody knocks on my door and said, um, AJ, let's um, trade, um, I'll be like, yeah, sure. But he says, oh, I don't, I don't really like your wife. I think she's ugly. Um, I think you're a dick, uh, but let's trade. What do you think I'm going to do with that guy? Do you think I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, sure, let's trade? Or do you think I'm just going to knock him out? Of course, I'm going to knock him out, right? So this is exactly the, the kind of diplomacy that the British people are doing um, against the rest of the world. And I came on the Duran channel and, and Alexander asked me the same question. Why are British politicians acting like this? What, what's the problem? And I said, basically, it's down to British exceptionalism. And that will basically answer all your questions. And it's exactly that, guys. It's British exceptionalism. It comes down from all the way from the imperialistic days, the colonialism days. The British just think they're the best. Uh, they think they still run the world. And they cannot take it when other countries, such as China, where they, were, they used to look down upon once upon a time and now doing better than them. And that's the problem. And that's exactly what uh, each of these politicians is thinking and, and this is exactly why it explains why they talk the way they talk. So IMF tears up UK recession forecast, says the economy will now grow faster than Germany. I've already spoken about that. That's not really something to celebrate about because uh, Germany is, yeah, they're, they're in a worse state than us, but um, 
you are looking at complete deindustrialization of, of Germany, but you're also looking at complete, complete deindustrialization of UK as well, which I'm going to go through in a bit. So you have um, BT, uh, you can see is, Vodafone is slashing 11,000 jobs. BT is slashing 55,000 jobs. And 800,000 car jobs in it are at risk in UK. So people probably ask to themselves, what does Britain export? What is Britain's main export? I mean, why does Britain have such a high GDP? What does it actually sell around the world? So one of the main things that British has been um, exporting has been cars. And their car industry has been very famous over the years. And they've had some really, really good brands and uh, and cars they, they were kind of spreading around the world. They have around 800,000 to a million people working in this industry. And all of the industries relating to cars as well, like, for example, you can have, you know, lots of garages, you can have uh, companies selling tires, you can have companies uh, which sell car accessories. And, you know, there's a huge car industry, which is kind of all linked up to you know, the manufacturing of cars that Britain do. So all of this is going to be thrown out the window. Um, so the guy uh, who, who says this has basically said that we've been done on the Brexit deal. Um, we need to renegotiate Brexit because Boris, Boris basically went in to the Brexit meeting and signed every single paper he was given. He didn't even read anything. He just signed it because he wanted to get Brexit done. And again, you know, people people can say, oh, um, it's not all about the Brexit. It's basically how you, it's the government which absolutely destroyed Brexit. And you're right. I mean, you know, if if there was a good government, if there was a competent government, then maybe it could have been good. The Brexit could have been good. I mean, you needed a very competent government um, to basically, you know, start fresh. And I'm talking about going to each and every country around the world, starting fresh new trade deals, starting fresh new relationships, you know, staying neutral in wars such as what's happening in Ukraine, you know, and, and basically having a independent foreign policy. So it could have worked, you know, but unfortunately, but we all know Boris has been completely lazy. He hardly went to any countries apart from Ukraine. He went, Ukraine, he probably went there for like 10 times. Uh, he probably went to America once as well. But pretty much most of the time he was in UK, you know, having his little parties during lockdowns and what a, you know, what have you. And uh, he's an absolute lazy prime minister. And he actually has destroyed Britain. You know, we are in this position mainly because of Boris Johnson and the Tories to some extent, but mainly Boris Johnson. So this guy is basically saying, um, uh, it, you know, it's Stellantis, which makes Vauxhall, Peugeot, Citroën and Fiat cars, says special arrangements with the EU pose a threat to our export business and sustainability of our UK manufacturer operations. So basically, a lot, there's a lot of red tape uh, for cars in UK to sell to Europe. and uh, We're not competitive anymore. However, Brexit is probably the small issue right now. I mean, this is not the major issue. The major issue is, you know, gas-powered cars or are being replaced by electric cars. And China is pretty much taking over. China is... Um, has basically put this emissions target in place. And I think it's called the 6B emission target in China, which basically bans gas, gas powered cars to be sold in China and driven around in big cities like Beijing and Shanghai. So you need a special license to drive in those cities. And if you have a gas powered car, then your license is gonna be rejected. So they are pushing for everyone to buy electric cars in China. And this 6B regulation um, is going to be, it was, it was supposed to uh, take effect this May, but they've, in, they've actually increased it by six months. 
So by December, by January, this is going to be taken into effect. And everybody in China is going to be buying electric cars. So the electric car market in China is basically run by Chinese companies like BYD, um, obviously Geely, NIO, um, Xpeng, many other brands as well, as well as Tesla as well. So these car companies are going to be churning out electric cars for 1.4 billion people in China. And they'll also be exporting these cars to Europe and the rest of the world as well. So there's not really much room uh, for British cars or gas-powered British cars to be competitive in like a year or two years. I would say by next year, British cars are not going to be competitive at all. Um, Chinese cars are going to be taking over because the whole world is going green, whether you like it or not. And these electric cars, which are getting cheaper and cheaper by the day, is becoming cheaper to make. And they are, they are basically cost effective, the same price as, uh, as gas cars. And also another problem that Britain has, Britain recently released this um, ULES. Um, it's, it's basically, um, if your car is a gas powered car, or if your car is a certain, uh, if it's quite old within a certain date, uh, you are not allowed to drive around London, or otherwise you will get fined. So you are basically forced to get a new car, or you are forced to get an electric car uh, to reduce emissions around London. So these rules means people are now going to be forced to buy electric cars. And these gas powered cars are pretty much gone. So all of these jobs, I can imagine going, you know, 800,000 to a million jobs going by next year or the year after because the whole world is going to be looking to buy electric cars and Britain it doesn't have any gigafactories in Britain there's no uh, battery factories in UK as well I think they're thinking about building one no car company is going to come here because of Brexit because of all these issues because of all the uh, inflation issues economic issues nobody's going to invest Chinese companies are definitely not going to invest here because Look at the way Chinese companies get treated in the UK, like Huawei. You know, as a as a Chinese company, you are the first country you want to stay away from is Britain. You know, if you come to invest here, look, I mean, look at the way Huawei was treated. Every Chinese company is going to be thinking they're going to be treated the same way, so they're going to stay away. So the British car industry is going to be disappearing over the next year or two. You heard it here first, and this is when the British economy is going to really tank. And when you lose about a million jobs and when you lose the whole car industry that Britain was famous for, then um, things are going to really seriously destroy UK. And, and you, you will see UK then turning into a, a very second or third rate class city. Um, even Eastern European countries are going to be richer than UK at this point. And... Things are not looking good, guys. Not not looking good at all. <clears throat> so we have also had a f um, King Charles coronation as well. And how much do you think this cost Britain? Well, this article basically tells you how much it is. It's basically cost... Um, the whole thing cost around... 300 to 500 million but then nobody's adding the bank holiday as well um, that um, that this coronation caused which means that there was a whole day of bank holiday nobody was allowed to work or businesses were shut down and when you have a bank holiday this usually means the economy loses around 3 billion so altogether the whole thing with all of the security and everything going on it probably, probably would have cost 3.5 to 4 billion um, just for this coronation. And people are asking the questions: Why? Why are you? You know, why are we still paying for all of this? Because especially when the economy is not doing very well, why are we paying for King Charles's coronation? Nobody cares about King Charles anymore in UK. Nobody cares about the royal family anymore. You know, young kids nowadays, they're all about representation and diversity. 
the royal family has got no diversity, they've got, they've got no representation, they're all born with a silver spoon in their mouth, there's stories about, you know, King Charles when he was a prince, that he had slaves to hold um, tooth, you know, put toothpaste in his tooth, toothbrush and brush his teeth for him and you know, basically, these guys have got another life. You know, when you're that rich, when you're royalty, you have, you know, man slaves doing a lot of the work for you. You will never... You know, do, you, do you guys think that Prince Charles or King Charles would have done his own washing? Do you think he would have washed his own underpants? No way! He would have had these man slaves doing it for him. Now I'm coming to the idiot of the day section. And the idiot of the day goes to Mr. Ben Wallace, and Ben Wallace is the British Defence uh, Secretary, and I got this story from Military Summary, I don't know if you guys follow him, but he's, um, he's pretty good, he gives you daily updates with what goes on in Ukraine, and I just found this story absolutely hilarious, absolutely hilarious. So Ben Wallace went to Ukraine a few weeks ago, and he signed this deal with the Storm Shadows and everything like that, and he really messed up, you know, he really messed up big time because he posted this picture and he posted this picture and in the middle there's some sort of letter or postcard and it's got a logo at, at the middle, if you can see, there's a plane there and there's a logo on the top right and this logo basically points to an airport and this is the airport, the Aviation Brig Brigade and and this is the only airport with this logo. So basically, he messed up. He, he's given away intelligence to the Russians. Uh, and and what the Russians did yesterday, they blew up this airport, including all of these planes with, that were fitted with storm shadows and things like that. And they lost the whole airport, basically. They lost all the planes in the airport. They lost all the um, storm shadows that were fitted in. An absolute rookie mistake, absolute rookie mistake. And you you got to say, this guy, Ben Wallace, he's got absolutely no clue. And giving away secrets like that, causing lots of um, destruction uh, to Ukraine because of his stupidity. And this is why this guy is the idiot of the day. So, hope you enjoyed my show, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And uh, also see in the comment section. And look forward to my updates um, about moving to a new channel soon. Because I think um, I think this channel is done, guys. If I get one more strike, um, YouTube's definitely going to delete this channel. So I'm going to have to start preparing uh, to move to a new one. Anyway, thanks a lot. And don't forget, you can um, support me in other things like Patreon and um, Locals as well. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.